Hey guys, the time is here and the house is done. I'd like to show you around. Come on in. As we come in, we are in this beautiful foyer area. We're greeted with a lot of natural light and you can see the big timber trusses right above us. I really like this whole open concept because there's so much beautiful stuff in this house you can actually appreciate it from pretty much anywhere. One of the first things that you see right when you walk in are the double barn doors. It looks absolutely beautiful. We have this really massive header above there and it has a really nice arch top. Just the craftsmanship is extraordinary right when you walk in. Right above us, we have this big 12 by 12 beam. In fact, when you look throughout the whole great room area, you can see that 12 by 12 uh, spanning the whole perimeter. And that's what those timber trusses come down on. So right as you walk in, we have this dining room area. To one side of the dining room is a butler's pantry. What I like about the butler's pantry is it has these eight foot tall double swing doors. They go either direction really massive hinges on here. Those hinges, I think, just look, they look very appropriate with the house. Uh, it's the styling, a lot of these details that I really appreciate, and it even matches the door hardware that you see on all the cabinetry throughout the home. And as we head into the kitchen, we can see a continuation of the same exact style, the same door style, as well as wood species. But on the island, I decided to go with an accent. What I also did with the island that's a little bit different is I have a flush toe kick. It gives it more of a furniture appearance. Now on the toe kick on the perimeter here, I've got a recessed toe kick and that allowed me to do the under cabinet lighting. In fact, you'll see under cabinet lighting also on the wall cabinets and above those wall cabinets. This is one of the meal staging areas in the kitchen. It's nice, it's out of the hot zone, so you don't have a lot of action over here. This helps prepare for dinner. And then what you also see over here is a second kitchen sink. Someone can be cutting up veggies over here, another one can be prepping over here. I really like this Wolf induction oven here. What I really like about the induction top is that it's very easy for me to clean. And it also, let's say you're boiling water, you can boil water twice as fast and you can cook everything very evenly. And there's also plenty of room on both sides of the countertop here to set any hot dishes or any of your prep food. Speaking of countertops, the solid surface top, look how thick that is there and this nice radius on the top. This top over here is a quartz slab and it looks absolutely massive. One of the things I also like is I've got a dishwasher over here and then this faucet's a special faucet. If I have dirty hands or let's say I'm washing dishes, I can easily turn it on and off with uh, just any touch to the faucet. This sink over here has the same exact faucet but what it also has is a hot and cold water spigot. So what I can do is actually make my morning tea and it comes out with boiling hot water. Some extra consideration that we had when designing this sink base is we actually put a fully functional drawer below. A lot of people would have a dummy drawer here, one that is non-operable. In this case, I was able to actually use the same amount of space and get more functionality. And we did the same thing on the island here too. So we've got that sink base. Notice the soft clothes on that drawer, as well as on the doors here too. Speaking of this island, you need to see how much functional storage there is in here. Both of these, they look like decorative end panels, don't they? But I can have spices here. I can also remove this, this shelf here and I could actually have a bunch of trays. Also over here, by these island stools, I figured this would be a perfect place to keep a bunch of stuff that I wouldn't access much. And then over here is the microwave drawer. I get a lot of questions about this. So all you do is press a button and it opens up. It makes it really easy to take a heavy dish and set it in there or to, of course, lift out the hot dish. I like entertaining and having people over for holidays and such. And usually I need the crock pot. By the way, that was an extra deep drawer there. Really easy to store this away. Now when I have this all set up, it's gonna be important to keep it running. That's why it's nice to actually have an outlet right in the island. But I also have plenty of room here for setting out other dishes. Now even if I'm not entertaining, how nice for me to be able to plug in my blender, which I use daily, right here, and not have cords dangling over the countertop. Now the other appliance I get a lot of questions about is this Professional Series Sub-Zero Refrigerator. 
What I really liked about it is that it is extra tall. And I wanted that height throughout the whole kitchen. We have four big windows up here. The ceiling gets as tall as 22 feet. We also have this incredible range hood over here. This range hood is something special that Golden Eagle does. It takes actually a lot of extra engineering to make sure that we're supporting all of this weight. This here is a, a four by five hewn band board up here and it actually matches the rest of the wood styling throughout the house. And that stone up there, it's the same stone that you see on the fireplace. But before we head over there, I just want to point out the extra height we did in these cabinets. We actually have glass up there. It has a, a, a rough industrial finish. I think those industrial elements throughout the kitchen as well as the whole home tie in really well and you'll, you'll easily see them in the light fixtures. So actually the glass finish on this light fixture is very similar to that glass finish in the cabinetry itself. This huge fireplace is just the center of the home. I really like this stone style. I think it gives me a rugged timber theme. But what I really like the most is this incredible wood burning fireplace. It's 45 inches wide here. This thing can heat the entire home. It'll heat up to 2,300 square feet and it is something that'll last me a lifetime, that's for sure. I really like the little details here in the, in the round radius on the hearth here, as well as the stone up here on the mantle. It looks really neat. This is where I'm spending most of my time, so I wanted to make sure it felt comfortable. And a big part of feeling comfortable is having really nice lighting. This here accents up the ceiling, highlighting those incredible timber trusses. As you've probably figured out by now, I really get into lighting and the way a space feels. So for me to just be able to sit down, have my fireplace right there, TV ahead of me, an incredible view, really nice ambient lighting, but there's still a lot more to show you. So let's head on over to the master suite. As we enter the master suite, you can see that there's a big eight foot tall door. That's actually a common theme throughout this whole center section because the walls are 10 feet tall. That not only allows for us to have that 12 inch band board, but also really massive trim around the doors. I love the way the master suite turned out. And one of my favorite things is the incredible view. Just look at all these windows. These craftsman style grids have wood on the interior and a maintenance free aluminum cladding on the exterior. You'll notice that these windows seem extra tall. Well, that's because these are nine foot walls in here and that allowed us to go with taller windows. I also have a sloped soffit line, which allowed me to go taller with the header heights in here. What that really allows for is I can be laying in bed and easily see the stars at night. That happens pretty often. But I also have so much natural light coming in through these windows that it just peers up this vaulted ceiling. And you can see how that loft space is so well lit. Now remember, this was originally just going to be a tall wall going up there. And then I saw a great opportunity to open this area up. I really like how it turned out. In fact, I'm going to sneak up there right away and just show you how neat it looks. It's just incredible how this all turned out. You can see the four beams that are following this ceiling tying into the big bridge beam up here. This also is a custom railing made out of rebar. There's a big space up here. I could do a lot of things, but I think primarily I'll use it as a, a quiet reading spot. We're actually coming down into the master closet area and there is a really neat closet organizer system in here. You'll notice that this cabinetry here, it actually matches what we see in the master bath. This here is a rustic hickory. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. Look at the way this solid surface top just angles across. And we've got really nice integrated bowls here, and this solid surface is very easy to clean, especially with these wall-mounted faucets. What always catches my attention when I walk in is these industrial looking lights. I really like how they reflect in this large mirror. Now you'll notice that I kind of have a unique trim around here. I actually asked Golden Eagle to send me out some extra material and I made sure to stain it this dark finish. That way it not only matched my faucets, but it gave it more of the, the bold accent that I was looking for. This walk-in shower turned out really well. I really like that there's basically nothing to step over when you get in here. It's a perfect transition from the rest of the floor. I also really like this glass wall. It goes all the way from floor to ceiling and it allows me to really appreciate the rest of the tile in here. You'll notice that there are two rain heads in here and they each have their own temperature controls. So not only will each person have their own temperature setting, but there's also a niche for each person too to keep their own stuff in there. 
This window is waterproof and it has obscure glass in here for privacy. I can't imagine if I wouldn't have had this waterproof window in here. This is something that our design team absolutely encouraged because this space allows for the natural light to not only flow into the shower, highlighting all this beautiful tile, but it also goes through this glass wall and flows throughout the rest of the master bath. If you have the space, I highly recommend a powder room. Not only to get your own private toilet, but also a nice sink area that we can wash your hands before you exit. By the way, I just love the space saving features of these pocket doors. I really like having this door between the walk-in closet and the laundry. It's just incredibly convenient. It's easy for me to pop in and out. Another really nice thing is if someone's still sleeping in the master suite, you can kind of get out into this area without disturbing anyone. Look at all this countertop area. It makes it really nice for folding. I even have a insert on the countertop here. Now, of course, you can have your regular laundry tub for soaking items in here. And when you're doing that, you can leave this over the top and still be folding stuff. A home like this lends itself to unique spaces. There's actually a plant shelf right above us. Some people might call it a mini loft, but basically I can see having Christmas decorations up there. This is that large header that I had mentioned. It's right on the other side of the foyer area, which has the barn doors. What's nice about these double barn doors are when you close them both together, it actually gives you privacy in this laundry area. I really like the functional use of that, and it also looks really good when it's not in use. By the way, all these cabinets up here, really nice for a laundry room area. Now, right when you walk in outside of the garage, there's this mud room area. I've actually got custom cabinetry here designed through Golden Eagle. We've got hooks on here. And then for the stuff that's not necessarily in season, that can be stored in here. And this has closet organizers, like what you saw in the master suite. It was important to me to have a space dedicated to the dogs. That way they could easily come and go as they wish through the doggy door. I also have cabinetry in here. It allows for me to store their toys and their food in here too. This whole space is tiled off. Makes for a really nice continuation from the dog room into the mud room and then into the laundry. All of this is connected right into the garage. I really am happy with how big it feels in here. Now this is a heated garage and it's something that I can actually control through an app on my phone. So I can control the in-floor heat. It's all connected to a boiler. And that's why you see a drain here right in the middle. We installed a water source directly in the garage. This will allow me to wash off my truck in the middle of winter. You'll also notice that we have drywall on the wall here. The drywall as well as the timbers throughout the whole garage just made a lot of sense. Being that this is a heated space, I needed to insulate it anyway. The garage doors are super insulated as well as the walls and the ceiling. Even this space out here is great for entertaining. Now you're probably wondering, where do I keep all of my stuff? Well, my garage is probably gonna stay as, as organized as you see it right now because I have the flexibility of utilizing a storage truss right above me here. This room up here is actually just as large as the garage below. The storage truss is fantastic for things that I wouldn't access regularly, like Christmas decorations. Now the staircase from the garage into the basement this is incredibly convenient, especially because it's extra wide and extra tall. I can move large items down or up the stairs easily. And there's also a special feature on that deadbolt down there on that door. I can actually unlock it remotely through my smartphone. It's incredibly convenient if I ever have a service person coming over to visit. I can give them remote access to that space without them having full access to the rest of the house. In fact, I have those same deadbolts on all of my exterior doors. What's nice about that is I can be out of town, I can be away from home, and if I am unsure whether I lock the door or not, I can just check on my phone, and then I could lock it remotely. The same thing is applicable with the garage doors too, so I could open or close those through my phone. Something you'll see here is there's no step from the garage into the house. It's incredibly convenient whether you're bringing in groceries or if you have someone over who's in a wheelchair, but for me, I think of my grandparents. They come to visit me pretty regularly, and it's nice for them to not have to think about, you know, the difficulty of getting upstairs. So this is really a great decision. I'm glad I did it. Speaking of my grandparents, you probably remember when I was showing them my floor plan. My grandpa had suggested to me that it was important to consider, well, what if you've been out grocery shopping? And you, know, you wanna get home to go to the bathroom, and you gotta come and set down your groceries, 
and have a bathroom nearby. You don't want to run across the house. So this was more of my grandpa's vision. And he's been doing this his whole life. All of us have. It was really neat to be able to take his advice and implement that into my dream home. You already saw the stair from the garage into the basement. Now this here is the primary one. This is the one that separates the kitchen and the great room area. It's extra tall, 42 inches tall here. A double top rail, which is more of a craftsman style. And I really like the channel that goes around these newel posts here. It just looks extra special. You'll even notice that these are actually timber stairs and they have wooden pegs that connect into the stringers below them. Even look at this railing, this metal piping. It, it just ties into the rest of the industrial look throughout the house. This hewn finish that I use throughout the whole home, it looks really rough and rugged, more of a reclaimed nature. What I like about it is that it's actually smooth. By the time it gets sanded down and the sealer goes on there, it's so smooth that not even a microfiber towel would get caught on it. And it's like that throughout the whole home, whether you're looking at these timbers or even the trim here. Now, we're on the other side of the house, and this is the guest bathroom. I just love the way the herringbone turned out in here. This tile pattern looks absolutely gorgeous. I think it's great for a smaller space like this. It kind of draws the eye in and lengthens out the room. In the master bathroom, we had that window in the shower area. I did the same thing in here. It just makes the space feel a lot larger. I really like the way it looks too. And having this barn door style glass door, it allows for all that light to naturally come through. Now for the observant person, what they'll really appreciate about this bathroom are the rafters on the ceiling. Those are actually structural and they support the kids' lofts in the bedrooms. Let's go over there and take a look at those. This up here are those beams that continued through and it's supporting that kids' loft up there. It's really neat. We've got this custom ladder going up to here. It's really neat being up here. This loft area is meant to be for kids. That's why there's a door actually connecting to the other side. Now, both doors would need to be unlocked, of course, for someone to pass through, but I can just see this being an extra play space or somewhere where someone could have a sleepover and one of their friends could actually stay up here. Now, it's also built with the same integrity as we had in the master area. The railing is powder coated and custom made to be strong and fit perfectly to the space. It's actually mounted directly to the floor system. I also, of course, appreciate these, these custom timbers with these fluted ends down here. It's beautiful, it looks decorative. And then this here is two by six decking. So this decking on top here that I'm sitting on is actually the ceiling finish in the bathroom below. Just like all the other closets in the house, the guest bedrooms have cabinetry inside of them. What I like about this is it keeps everything in one place. Also, I really appreciate that I don't have to go buy dressers or make the bedroom any larger to accommodate those dressers. Before we head outside, I'd like to touch on a few of the primary finishes in the house. The drywall, it is a heavy skip trowel. I think that gives more of an old world style and, and you see a lot of that in my tile selection as well. The flooring, that's a rustic hickory and on the ceiling we have more of a reclaimed pine. Looks absolutely gorgeous and I think it accents those timbers really well. But let's head on outside. There's a lot to show you out there and I think it's just as good as the inside. And then outside I want it to feel like an extension of the inside of the home. That's why I've continued with the craftsman motif. You can see that in these light fixtures here. There are also a lot of craftsman elements on the outside that I'd like to show you. First thing that I usually notice is the hand-hewn finish on the outside here. Now this is a big 12-inch vertical corner. I think it looks really strong and massive. It looks like it actually holds up the whole house. And then below that, I've extended the cultured stone around the whole perimeter of the house. It's actually the same height throughout. So it's not only on the foundation, but I also raise it up an extra foot above the decking here. Now this here, this is more of that hand-hewn finish, but it's a very special product. This is called our 12-inch double hewn. It's something created at Golden Eagle. My dad actually came up with it. What it has is this double round on the top and bottom, and then a flat on the face. It's also a unique characteristic that we went with 10 inch wide trim on the sides of the windows and 12 inches on the top. Remember when I was in the master bedroom and I had pointed out that I can have larger windows because of my sloped soffit that I'm using? Well, this is that sloped soffit right here and you can see that it allowed the header heights 
to go up taller than usual. In fact, all of the roof lines are very unique. We went out from three feet to four feet at its highest point up here in the gable. I really like the look of the cedar sawn shakes up in the gable. It contrasts with the log that you see on this wall as well as the stone that you see on the fireplace chase here. When you look at all of my exterior doors, my soffit, my fascia, you'll see that it also matches the same color as this maintenance free railing that we have here. It was important to me to create an outdoor space that could accommodate having a lot of people over. I can see where I could have a morning breakfast here or just have food sitting up there while I have guests over. The Parmers are really into having campfires, so it was important to me to be able to accommodate 10 to 15 people at one time. That's why I have these nice Adirondack chairs here. You can even see I was able to incorporate the landscaping and the boulders into the seating around the fireplace area too. In fact, we actually brought in 80 boulders to the job site here, and that's how I was able to bring in more of the mountain setting to the Wisconsin North Woods. This is a very flat piece of property, but as you can see, I was able to raise the house out of the ground, which allowed for me to have a lot of this beautiful stone on the foundation and tear the boulders to incorporate some very unique landscaping. Speaking of boulders, I just need to show you what we did with the dog door here. It looks really neat and the dog comes up three boulders to get into the dog room. A really fun element in the house. Another neat thing is what we did on the back side of the garage here. This certainly does not look like an ordinary garage. It is full of incredible detail. We have a metal roof up there with two by six decking below it, and it's all supported by these rafters with beautiful fluted ends on them. I really like having the windows here. It's a continuation of the home. And then the accent that you see up there is one by 12 board on board that has that hand hewn finish. I think it offers really good contrast to the horizontal log below. I'll be finishing off the basement in the future and I wanted to maintain the possibility of adding bedrooms down here. That's why I decided to put in these large windows. They're the same exact size as the windows that you see up there. And all of these have egress window wells. What's really nice about that is they let in a lot of natural light and it's easy to get in and out of them. This wall is just absolutely beautiful. I really like how I broke it up with stone, log, and cedar shingles. And then to top it all off, I've got that beautiful queen arch truss up there. And we also have that same truss above the garage here. We extended the rake over to be four feet deep. That way it protects the truss and also offers more of an accent. You can see this beautiful metal roof area. It's supported by these rafters again, just like what we saw on the other side of the garage. You know I really appreciate all that detail and I just had to do it on the main feature of the home, which is the covered porch. This covered porch actually extends the whole length of the front of the house here. We've got really beefy spindles here, the double top rail, these really nice double arched brackets. They're not only arched on the inside, but also this side too. We've got these same rafters supporting this whole roof system. It's completely structural. And I really like that I'm able to walk up to my front door, admire this double hewn half log, and then also the beautiful front door. It's eight feet tall, three and a half feet wide. This is forged metal hardware on this. Even the doorbell, it's an incredible feature. It just looks absolutely beautiful. Something as simple and small as that. Those are the little decisions that you're making when you're designing your own dream home. It's this kind of attention to detail that really makes it a Golden Eagle Log and Timber home. They have thought of everything, and their one-stop shopping experience made it really easy for me to pick out the home of my dreams. This is certainly something I'd recommend to anyone. I hope you learned a lot following along on the construction. If you have any questions about the floor plan or want to see what it looks like, there is a link in the description below. This was a terrific experience. I'd certainly do it again. And thanks for joining me and following along. Hey guys, thanks again for following along and watching all 10 episodes. If you're thinking of building a new home and you want all the details done just right, then give either me or one of our sales advisors a call. Not only do we do log and timber homes, but we also do conventional custom homes as well. We have built over 5,000 homes in the US and Canada since my grandparents founded our company in 1966. Be sure to subscribe as we continue to feature new homes, tips, and ideas.